In this video, we're going to have a look at ERC 1155 tokens. We're going to talk about the definition of an ERC 1155 token standard, how they work, how they're different from ERC 20, ERC 721, and how it all relates to NFTs. Because ERC 1155 is a popular token standard for NFTs, even though it can be used for other things as well. Uh, first of all, my name is Philip, and I'll be the host for this video. And uh, you're watching here on the Morales channel. If you haven't checked out Morales yet, you're building dApps, you're building applications on top of crypto blockchain, then you need to check out Morales. It's uh, the easiest and fastest way to build dApps. With that said, we're going to get straight into the content. Previously on this channel, we talked about ERC721 and how that token standard works. Because that is a token standard purely for NFTs, non-fungible tokens. If you haven't watched that video yet, I would watch that video before this one to, get you, to give you a better introduction of what an NFT uh, token standard does and how that's different from the ERC20. This, you know, this video will be a little recap, but it won't be the full, it won't get, get you the full understanding of what it actually is. So in order to kick this off, let's talk about some of the things that ERC1155, uh, how, how that's different from ERC721, what it actually improved, because that is what ERC1155 did. It did improve on the token um, token standard, uh, both on the 721 and on the uh, uh, ERC20. So if you have a look at this here, we can see the EIP. We've talked about this many times now. And the simple summary here of the EIP is a standard interface for contracts that manage multiple token type types. A single deployed contract may include any combination of fungible tokens, non-fungible tokens, or any other configurations. And this is really the key point of ERC-1155. You can now manage multiple token types in the same contract. Because one big problem with ERC-721 was that for each new NFT, if it was, you know, okay, CryptoKitties, that's one NFT, that can be one contract, but then you have CryptoCuties, that had to create another contract. Um, if you have, you know, the same owner of two projects, they can create multiple different NFTs in the same contract using 1155. And that means that it will take up less space on the blockchain. Because when this was released, there was a lot of talk about how crowded the blockchain is and how much data it consumes and so on. And they were looking for ways to make this more efficient, meaning provide the same functionality, but with less space. So if you have fewer contracts deployed, then instead we can use one contract to manage a lot of different token types, then that's a win. So that's what they achieved with 1155. They can now manage multiple token types from one contract. And not only can they manage multiple NFTs, they can also have a mix of some can be NFT tokens, some can be normal tokens, fungible tokens, and some can be a mix, okay? And that's, you know, actually a very cool idea, right? Uh, because you might want to mix in if you're building a game, for example. Let's say you're building a game and you have in-game items. Well, you want gold, maybe, uh, as you know, one use case for tokens that you can use as an in-game currency. That is a fungible token. But you also want items. So you want swords, you want some sort of achievements, or you want special items. Yeah, I've talked about you need sword, you need helmets, you need pants, whatever it might be in your game. Uh, and those can be represented by non-fungible tokens because you don't want like, oh, I have a thousand pants or whatever. You want to own a unique, specific, non-fungible token. But once again, if this is all confusing to you about fungible, non-fungible, go watch the 721 video. So that is one thing that is different. Another thing that is different is that you can do batch transfers. And that was another thing that was um, sort of broken with 721. Uh, that in order to do a lot of transfers, you had to do them one by one by one by one. And this took up a lot of block space, right? And that was also an, an issue in the last bull run, a huge issue, just like it was in this bull run, where the gas fees are way too high, the blocks are full, etc. So that's why they came up with this batch transfer in 1155, so that in one single transfer, you can transfer multiple NFTs to multiple parties. And that's also a super cool invention. Those points are the two points that actually are the biggest differences in terms of functionality. Uh, then there is a lot of differences in how this is implemented 
And if you are a programmer, you can find those quite interesting. I'll talk a little bit about it uh, later on in the video, but I want to show you an example here. Uh, so here we have the page about 1155 from Open Zeppelin, which is a great project, by the way. They provide great resources if you're a programmer, uh, templates for different contracts and so on. And here you can see them initializing an 1155 token. So first of all, they have a bunch of different integers here, just numbers that they name different things. So they name it gold, silver, Thor's hammer, sword, shield. But under the hood, gold is just a, a name for zero. It's just an alias for zero. Same thing with silver is an alias for one. So these are just IDs, okay? And then in the constructor here of the contract, meaning what happens when this contract is created, they will mint new tokens. They do a bunch of mint calls. And these mint calls will create new token types. So they create, for example, gold, uh, which the second argument here is just a token ID. But since they did this alias, they can now call it gold. And they mint it to message.sender, the token, the contract creator. Here is how much they mint. So 10 to the power of 18. That's a lot of tokens. Silver, they mint 10 to the power of 27, even more. Thor's hammer, that they just mint one of. So that would be a non-fungible token because there is just one of that unique kind. Uh, sword, they mint 10 to the power of 9. This will also be a non-fungible token because it's an item, it's not a currency of any sort. Same thing with shield, they, they mean 10 to the power of 9. And then these can all be transferred and exchanged uh, separately of one another. You can transfer one and not the other and so on. So this is really the power. And if you later on wanted to create or mint more items, you could allow for that in your contract. And so this is what contracts like Rarible and all these other marketplaces uses as a base for their NFTs, because that allows them as a you know, marketplace NFT creator to allow people just create new tokens without them having to deploy new contracts over and over and over again. So this is very, very powerful stuff. Uh, and it is the standard, I would say, today for NFTs. If you're going to build an NFT today, you most probably would want to use the 1155 contract. Uh, I see very little reason to use the 721 uh, token standard unless you want something that's a little bit more simple and easy to understand. Because I, I usually tell beginners when they come into Solidity Programming that it's easier to start to learn with 721 because the contract is a bit easier uh, to understand. Uh, but if you're actually going to deploy something that's for production, 1155 is now sort of the gold standard for NFTs and tokens. So for those of you that are programmers, let's talk a little bit about how they achieve uh, this, um, this mix of fungible and non-fungible tokens uh, in terms of how they represent that inside the contract. So let me draw it a little bit. So in a normal, let's see, can I zoom in here a little bit maybe? Uh, so in a normal ERC721, uh, you would have, in order to represent the balances, a mapping that points from token ID to an address. And this would mean that you can input the token ID and you can get out the owner, right? So there are no, um, no balances here. You can't own two of one token ID, right? There's an ID and there is an owner for each token ID. In 1155, I need some more space here now because you'll see it's a bit more complicated. 1155, you have instead a mapping that points from the address, so the address you want to look up, that's what you have to input first. And then this points to another mapping, so it's a double mapping, meaning you have to input two things. You not only have to input the address, you also have to input the token ID. And this will give you an integer. And this integer is the balance. So uh, each token ID have a balance. And for those of you, uh, for those tokens that just have, you know, one as their limit, as the Thor's hammer up here, there, there will be other, uh, you know, parts of the code that will restrict the minting of Thor's hammer to only one, right? Um, and uh, that means that even though this integer could be higher, the other parts of the code won't allow it. So there is just one, and that will be represented here. So if that were the same 
use case as for the 721 where you can just have one, then you would just mint one and that's it. Uh, but the code, the representation of balances can support any number of uh, tokens. So if this is how you can achieve this mix between fungible tokens, and non-fungible tokens, because one address can own gold, for example, which was ID zero. You can I put this balance thing. Uh, token zero and that they can have a balance of 100 and then this person could also own Thor's hammer which was ID 3 which would uh, in this mapping you would input the address and the ID 3 it would give you in if that address owns that token the one so they own one and this structure is pretty smart but it can be compl complicated for beginners with this double mapping how does that work but it's really just that you input two things into the mapping and you get the end result uh, but it's a bit different from the 721. I hope you enjoyed this video because that's all that I was going to say about 1155. If you have any questions about this token standard or anything else that you want me to talk about, please let me know in the comment section below. But I appreciate you watching this video. And if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more Morales content. Check out morales.io for how to build dApps in a new, faster, better way. Um, and uh, I want to thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.